So good morning, everyone. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you all to the first virtual event of National Center of Excellence for Cybersecurity Technology Development and Product Entrepreneurship. The National COE is a joint initiative of Data Security Council of India and Ministry of Electronics and IT to make India a destination for cybersecurity innovation. We would like to extend a warm and cordial welcome to all our guests and speakers. Cybersecurity has, has emerged as a priority area for investment, and investment in India is picking up gradually. But still, there is a momentum that needs to be nurtured and scaled up to create a convincing ecosystem. This virtual event today will provide a platform to learn about the investment in cybersecurity until now, share the experience of investing in security startups, and bring stakeholders to deliberate on the strategies and create sound cybersecurity investment ecosystem. And also, we are hosting a town hall at the end, giving opportunity to all these startups and budding entrepreneurs out there to interact live with our leading investors. We hope this conference will provide you ample opportunities and experiences. So before we start the event, uh, I would like to uh, give, share some best practices on using this platform, which is AirMeet. So Moita, would you like to share your screen right now? So to have a seamless experience on AirMeet, please make sure that you're logged in through your laptop and it's recommended to use Google Chrome browser. If you face any connectivity issue during the event, we appreciate if you can refresh your page. It will take a few moments and you will be back on the screen again. For can any questions? See? Yes, Moita, we can. Thank you. And for any questions you may have, you can use the chat window on your right and or you can raise your hand so that we can push you on stage. And make sure you on your video when you're on stage. To express your sentiments, you may use the emoticons at the bottom of your screen. Thank you so much, Moita. Thank you. Moving on to our first session of the day, I would like to welcome the speakers to deliberate on the topic, investing in cybersecurity startups, why, how, and what happens after signing the term sheet. So please welcome Mr. Venkat Vallabhaneri. He's a general partner of IDFC Parampara. Ms. Padmaja Ruparel, co-founder of Indian Angel Network. Mr. Sandeep Panda, CEO and founder of InstaSafe. And to moderate the session, I would like to welcome Mr. Dhruv Khanna. He's the co-founder of Data Resolve. So as per the format of the session, I Dhruv, it would be go on, going on for 30 minutes and we'll leave some space for Q&A at the end. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Dhruv. All right. Thanks. And very good morning to everyone. I think uh, for all of us, uh, one, this is one of the first sessions uh, in the space of cybersecurity and what goes well after the investment. And I think uh, virtually this is the first one for all of us. So welcome again. Uh, I think without taking too much time, uh, I have Venkat, I have Padmaja, I have Sandeep uh, uh, on the session. So I will start my, I think, uh, quick questions. And I think we will have Q&A after that, right? So this is my uh, first question to you, Venkat. Right. Uh, what are the three things you look at in a company uh, before even you engage them for the investment? Oh, sure, Drew. So hope uh, you are able to hear me okay. Yes? Okay, cool. So there, there are many things we look look in the entrepreneur before we invest. Actually, I'll go in the priority so you can pick the top three, right? So I would say the first and topmost is a team, right? You know, we need to have the strong leadership and team. And uh, what we look for in the team is uh, drive. First thing is whether the team has the required drive to really you know, you know, take this company to the next level. Ownership is something. Perseverance, right? Because business never goes the way you plan that to be, right? So you need to have that kind of strong perseverance as well. Where they complement each other, that's the next one. Um, because cybersecurity by itself is a very complex in, in nature, in my view, right? And, and it also requires sudden set of domain knowledge to a certain extent. So um, uh, do, do these founders understand the space and the required use cases? Can they connect to the customers and sell the product well? So these are additional things we look in the cybersecurity side of it. And, and one other thing is during our interactions with, uh, with the founders, we carefully watch their body language, right? Their confidence, their interpersonal skills, 
how they how, how are they going to you know interact with each other i mean are there going to be problems in the future so this is something most of the founders miss right i mean so you know we pay close attention to the little detail right during our interaction that's the first one second is obviously the product right what kind of product do you have the timing timing is important too right in the, in the, the product to the market timing and of course uh, business model scalability right so to answer those questions are you in the right field you know answer is emphatic yes because cyber security everybody knows that there's a scope and potential in the sector in the sector as you know um, you know uh, world economic forum says cyber attacks is one of the top five threats for to, to humanity right and second thing if you look at the last year approximately 46% of enterprises face faced uh, cyber attacks and and one third of the users have you know compromised data actually their personal data so there's lots and lots of activity in terms of entrepreneurship as well new companies are coming up every every week i guess right um uh, and uh, people say that cyber security products are going through uh, fifth generation innovation because every year the new attack vectors come in and new new technology comes in and you know world is becoming connected every you know and then you see that you know cloud has become mainstream iot is the everywhere autonomous cars industry 4.0 I mean, there's there's so many channels are getting open, right? So the key thing is identify the right problem, develop the right solution. Timing is very important because last year actually, right, we saw some company coming with the virus scan for on a, on a PC. I said wrong timing. It's a very mature mature field. So you got to figure out the right solution actually, right? That's that's something to keep in mind. Uh, next is a uh, product and uh, tra traction. While we don't look for profitability per se, but we look for paying customers traction what that means is the solution you have have some customers validation has been done and there is there's some revenue trickling in right what you know again that's where we come in right we do pre series a series a kind of investments and we come in and we help the uh, you know, product or company to scale up right and obviously customer testimonials we what we we talk to customers all the time right before investing so beyond this these are the top three i would say beyond this i would say execution plan value you right or not um, you got the clean cap table and and potential for exit 10x we would look for most of the, most of the most of the investors look look for that kind of exit potential there's a path to exit or not there's a few things we look for uh, through right so yeah thanks uh, thanks vikrit and i think good i think couple of key areas you have very well highlighted and uh, i think to all our fellows on the session i think it's a great uh, input right so padmaja my next question to you while venkat did mention about uh, looking at founders looking at uh, the testimonials uh, looking at the product and all this is very very key ingredient of an uh, typical uh, in investment memorandum deck right what do you think are the two three reasons why an investment memorandum right to the term sheet there always a drop i have seen a lot of time when we speak to uh, investors we realize that the time is very good but the time uh, you get into interaction with the founders you don't issue the term sheets or investors so what are three four areas you want to highlight which you which is a drop uh, hat for you or why you drop companies even the iams are good founders are good everything sure uh, thank you dhruv uh, first i would really like to uh, appreciate nascom dsci putting up this uh, conference i think it's uh, really the need of the hour we are all moved online including this conference so data security itself is a big uh, big big item and uh, great to see this uh, under the leadership of rama vedashi so uh, great and thank you for having me here to your question i think uh, dhruv let me dive uh, straight into it i think um, venkat has done a great job of uh, sort of laying out the I think the three, E's for me are, yeah, okay. the three E's for me are really entrepreneur, expertise, and execution. I think those are extremely important. And entrepreneurs, uh, in addition to what Venkat said, I think for me, what is very, very important is the team in terms of two things. Number one, in addition to what Venkat said, one is the complementarity of the team specifically in the cyber security data security kind of space it has to have for us at least 
a deep domain understanding of not what is good today, but what is the be next best innovation that is coming. Because this is a space which is evolving extremely, extremely rapidly. I mean, just uh, think about it. In the last one year, one of the online uh, video calling companies actually uh, gained over 300% in their share price. Just tells you the kind of adoption need and market that there is. And we need, more importantly, along with the person who understands the technology, the person who's going to sell the product. I mean, the sales piece is imperative. Just having an online piece doesn't work. And there are creative sales, uh, sales pitches that need to be figured out. And I think that's when we look for an entrepreneur to say, yes, does somebody in the, in the co-founder team have the understanding of what is the next best proposition? what's emerging elsewhere in the world and will this fit in somewhere in that that's one and for me the other point the other co-founder or co-founders need to have is their ability to save they have to be a for me personally they have to be a salesperson 24 by 7 365 days yes they, they need to be able to even spell sell to their spouse and children that the, i'm doing this for you and be focused on the company i think it's that important to me. Ex expertise in terms of what we look for, and this is what we do when we do deep dive, okay? Both of these don't come across in the first investor pitch. Expertise is, uh, we, we do a lot of deep dive, especially uh, cybersecurity, data security, what we are talking today. It's a very fast evolving space, and it's not clearly, India is not the leader. There are other countries around the world which are leading in this space and have gone to the next level. So our understanding of the team's product, is it, is it the next best? Where, where does it fit into the larger value chain? Please understand, the minute we talk about cyber, we talk about data security, we talk about online, geographic boundaries are broken completely, correct? So we are not looking at the best of Indian startups or propositions or technologies. We are now looking for best of global startups, next best propositions in technology. So it's extremely important that the expertise and the understanding of the technology and the diligence of the technology that we would do would be reaching, we would be reaching out to the globe. I mean, IEN as a network with its 500 investors and the fund and its, its investors, there is a network there, and it. I think entrepreneurs should expect, and we have a very good close relationship with NASCOM itself. Entrepreneurs should act, absolutely expect that investors will reach out to their networks to get this going. And the third piece is execution. You know, all of this. How are they going to execute? How are they going to deliver? How are they going to? How are they going to code it or build it? And how are they going to sell it? Ultimately, having the technology, the best in class technology is not going to get you the money. Money is going to happen when you sell it and you sell it to customers who are willing to pay and pay. And they pay. That's important. OK, so is it a B2B sales? Is it a software sale? How much of a hardware piece is going to be there? How can you reduce costs? How can you increase gross margins? What happens in terms of virus attacks? I think that came up in uh, uh, Venkat's point. Today, virus is actually a big threat. So how is all of this going to execute and re translate that into what we call financial projections? See, I, we all come in as early stage, seed stage investors. We all come in with an empathy and understanding that a lot of the projections are data oriented, right? They're ba built. They, they, they are going to change. I think we come in with that understanding. But we are all focused much more on the left side of the Excel sheet, which gives the different items, line items of revenues and expenses and risks and risk costs, etc. And that's where we actually look into the depth of thinking and planning that the startup is looking at executing this. And we evaluate it to say that how far is it from reality or how far is it from probability, to be honest. Reality is not the word. Probability is. So I think these are the deep dive diligences, which, which when we look at investments, is where the cookie crumbles or the cookie bakes. Okay. And 
I think what on, I want to leave this word because we're talking to a, many cybersecurity startups. Okay. I think um, this is a space where you don't need to do everything yourself. You need to understand that this is a very fast growing sector space. I mean, the world is today almost in a world war situation with coronavirus. The next major war is going to be on data. While we talk data is oil, data is also the perspective, is the reason for the next countries fighting. So I think entrepreneurs need to figure out what is core to their business and how do they put their wrapper on around it rather than trying to do everything themselves. I think startups don't have that ability in that this larger market to do it all by themselves. And that focus therefore becomes very important. And finally, I think what we have seen, and I would share this with entrepreneurs and all candidness that I can, that from the time you approach us till the time you get the money, not, you are under diligence. Let's not say that this is a diligence period after, and this is a negotiation period on the document, and this is a documentation period. I think it's imperative to understand that from, from the point you touch an investor till the point you get the money, you're under diligence. And, and that is very important for startups because the cookie can crumble anywhere along that line for an investment to happen. Thank you, Dhruv. Thank, thanks, uh, Padmaja. And I think that's a great input. I think uh, I think three good points. Uh, one is definitely the sales. I think the founders has to play a very important role here. And I totally buy and agree with you. And I think that's how the industry is picking up well, right? And I think the diligence, I agree. I think the diligence continues even post investment, right? And that's because that's where the confidence of an investor, the right interaction with your customers plays a very important role. Very nice. So uh, Sandeep, I think uh, I think you heard uh, our co, uh, co, co I think uh, investors, right? And 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 you've been in uh, you've already raised multiple rounds, right? So for you, what are the what is the one or two important things when you look at it? At what time I should go for investment? One, two, what kind of investors you wanted to onboard, right? Which is going to help you to scale your company and business. Hey, thank you, Dhruv. Uh, I think uh, phenomenally well covered by Venkat and Padmaja, ma'am. Uh, so first, I would like to tell you a couple of things. Uh, you know, this a lot of things have already been discussed here, but timing. And you know, I would like to stress on one thing called timing, right? The market timing defines the market opportunity. In cyber, the opportunity is everywhere. And, uh, you know, RSA conference beautifully says that this is the only space in IT which is the highest number of vendors. You know, application space, database space, infrastructure space. A mobile space, you have a couple of leaders. This is the space where everybody is a leader in different geographies, different territories, right? And now what we are seeing is kind of uh, uh, globalization in a nationalization concept, right? Where you would see largely, you know, geocentric uh, leaders emerging out. So it is very, very important that, uh, you know, you are focused there in terms of what your offering is and, and what is the value of the offering. And that's where sales comes, messaging and positioning in terms of what are you selling? What is even the CISO trying to replace? Because everybody has a budget. At the customer side, there's a budget that we are all dealing with, right? There are big guys who are, who are thinking in terms of wallet share. And then there are startups which are trying to create differentiative factors. Like what differentiates the, uh, the solution? What is the problem you're solving? How impactful is the problem? And, and this is where I would say, you know, it's, it's very, very important to understand the market and, and listen with customers. Like I'll tell you the story of Instasy. When we started, we wanted to simplify, you know, cyber and things like that. The biggest challenge was positioning ourselves early on because you know cloud mobility they were all shipping up in 2012 13 but they were not as popular as we saw once uh, the analysts like gartner and all defined a category for ourselves so that's where i would again come back to the point of timing right so you might be you know just hanging around for a couple of years playing around with the markets understanding customer requirements understanding how a channel needs to position your product keeping up with the team motivation again an extremely hard job and and everybody thinks where is the next big traction coming and and let's understand while we are all competing with global cyber security startups worldwide we are also competing with uh, you know wallet share or money which is there for other sectors right and other sectors can look very compelling or promising and while you're building cyber startups which which can take a lot of patient capital and patient time so there are these variety of factors that come into play and and that's where you know you would like to uh, see who are those investors who are patient with our with you who can help you understand the market, who can help you create a positioning for yourself, because there are a lot of sub-segments in the market which can be very appealing. Uh, but the question is, how do you even find them? 
and and that's where again sales comes back right so so product obviously is hygiene without a product you are not even there right but after product comes uh, you know your investors uh, you know patient money access to connections one of the things that i learned was how do you even know how to ask everybody says we all hear it that hey asking for help but then you know when you really need it you know when man said cookie crumbles or cookie bakes do you know where to ask for help because there are a lot of people who have connections or or who know you know how how things can be figured out but then at the same time when you are really fighting in the battle how to reach out whom to ask for help is easier said than done but but uh, this is what defines uh, how you do we not you know use it that okay thanks sandeep and i think uh, very interesting i think uh, revolution in terms of what do you look for uh, padmaj ma'am this is for you uh, i think what, based on what just sandeep has mentioned right uh, so while uh, uh, you are onboarded uh, right and you should a term sheet to a to a company right and you are in the diligence process and towards the end the cookie crumbles right you decided not to invest so what are one or two key things which uh, what do you have, what do you experienced uh, right uh, based on where you have issued a term sheet but you are not going ahead with the investment right so can you just share those key inputs for the founders and promoters on the call it would be a great learning for us okay i'll i'll share a couple and uh, let me just share this this is not in any order of priority so uh, please uh, please keep that in mind i think um, irrespective of sector okay for uh, us as an investor uh, errors of commission anything that comes out in the diligence which is close to errors of commission i think that's unacceptable to us which includes integrity issues which includes ethic issues which includes governance issues and that comes out in a dd i we we step back with all grace and respect and uh, we 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 do tell the entrepreneur and we share it in all transparency in fact i'm doing that right now with one of my comp- one of my potential uh, investees and we try and uh, go down a path of clinicality and transparency and verification but that issue is a big one for us to step back number one number two i think uh, you know as we inter- interact with the entrepreneurs uh, more and it always happens when you are deep diving diligence saying even when you are discussing documents and negotiating there's obviously much more interaction and i think we we learn a lot from entrepreneurs actually i've all i've learned i've learned from entrepreneurs tremendously and that's the high for me to engage with this ecosystem but it also share, tells us that where are the gaps in the entrepreneur team or what could they do better from the experience that we could bring out from looking at so many other companies and having invested in 170 plus 180 plus companies we built some level of uh, modest experience and we we try and build we try and mentor companies as well that look instead of building today we are having this conversation with another company where we're telling them listen why are you taking in the hard issue of uh, it's a cyber security company in a software uh, 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 more from the software perspective and we're trying to tell them that listen um, please shed the whole procurement and integration with the hardware hand it over to some bigger player it's not getting you any money into the company it's a pass through uh, it's just a pass through right and i i must say they are they are sort of seeing the light of day and they're working towards it i think ability to uh, uh, accept mentoring ability to accept a lot of strategic advice i think it's very important because you know early stage and seed stage uh, investing and early stage and seed stage companies uh, the partnership between an investor and entrepreneur there is a lot to do with chemistry rather than just mathematics right and if if people can't talk and engage and add value and work together and build a company i mean the objective will be the same for the investor and the entrepreneur they're going to be shareholders of the same company trying to achieve the same objective of creating a value for company right so i think that becomes very important that is it a, you know and and it's true even for an entrepreneur to be honest and they should be assessing investors as well that is this the team is this the people are these the people that we want to work with sure. so it's a people to people scenario at an early seed stage company unlike a, let's say a growth stage or a private equity company where a lot of the diligence interaction is is data centric is process centric it's market centric it's a lot of other things that don't even exist in a startup 
ஒரு <laughs> right that's one my second question to you is on uh, what kind of comp- potential cyber security companies you as group of investor this is to both of you that's the second question where you want to really want to invest so venkat you can take the first part uh, in terms of valuation and i think together you can take the later part a later question in terms of uh, the key areas or uh, companies you want to invest the way you look at the market over sure. to you sure um so i'll i'll cover a couple of details right you know taking you from uh, padmaja right there's a couple of details i want to get into and part of that i will co- cover the valuation as well right so when you guys are when you when you get when you get the term sheet right the company has to be ready to to with with the required data room right and for example what, whatever the data required you be ready before getting the term sheet right second thing is you know um people misunderstand mis- underestimate the time it takes to really close the term sheet and then close due diligence you know do the due diligence and close the actual final agreement right give enough time be patient i think it takes more than you have, again you can imagine actually that's something and and also do your homework in terms of uh, term sheet uh, um, you know some of the key terms in the term sheets right anti dilution just you can make note of these things you can ask the questions later anti dilution right of first refusal uh liquidation preferences and another important thing you got to look at board seats and affirmative rights these things will come as well so my request to you is you be well versed with all these terms understand them right otherwise what happens is you know this this becomes a emotional roller coaster to be honest right when you when you go through this exercise of you know term sheet negotiation and the and the final agreement negotiation to add to that now the covid situation is is really not helping for sure in the in the in the short term no investments will happen in my view right everybody is in the wait mode all the investors are is going to wait and see for the next 6 months is my view right 3 months minimum up to 6 months you don't see much of the equity much of the new investments that will happen but anything on in the flight that will continue but there there might be some slow down in the in the closure right keep that in mind second thing is the demand side for 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 the companies is going to slow down right because the 6 months whatever time 6 or 9 months the cash flow situation will get shifted right so valuation is a result of the cash flows and also the uh, uh positive sentiment right so when you come to the valuation because the cash flows are getting shifted demand is getting shifted by 9 months to 1 year the valuation obviously will come down and then add to that your 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 sentiment right investment sentiment is low so that that adds to the problem so you need to look at the valuation if you are looking for immediate immediate uh, you know um the funding i would rather say wait right if you can and and tighten you know, your belt and you know wait or go to the existing investors or or your family or friends to raise funds to survive in this in this period and and go back to the market that's my view and last thing um you know you as padmanabha mentioned you know just just hide you know have good professional partnerships right you know it's important to have the right partnerships to go through this process of uh, term sheet and other, other things right so i would stop there i you know, you know any questions i can handle that later yeah so padmanabha what's your view uh, one is definitely the covid state uh, what is your advice for our fellow promoters founders on valuation on valuations yeah on the one is the investment uh, the investment sentiments in the current scenario and then definitely the valuation right okay so you know uh, we are in turbulent times we are not on a stable ship at all so uh, i i surely don't want to i surely don't want to predict anything or give a because there's so many different perspective perspectives and sentiments floating around but let me try and give you some facts so that uh, people can uh, people can derive uh, their own interpretations so to always start with the positive things in life it makes it happen we've been having at uh, at the angel network we've been having pitch sessions every saturday in fact the next one has just started about a minute ago 
uh, at every pitch session we've had over 60 to 70 investors engaged on the online pitch sessions so these are all investors who are engaging number one number two i think there are uh, entrepreneur flow deal flow has really increased but i think we have an intelligent entrepreneur ecosystem out there uh, the the sector skew has changed dramatically and we are seeing what i usually call covid leverage sectors that <laughs> those sectors or propositions that will be able to run in this kind of turbulent times uh, I think, uh, for instance, a fashion uh, product will be hard to raise money, for instance. I think that skew has happened and we are seeing a higher percentage coming in from COVID leveraged uh, startups. I think the third piece that has happened is uh, uh, because perhaps people are under lockdown, uh, the diligences are happening much faster on the angel platform for sure. and. Uh, there is a lot of that interaction on the uh, and even at the fund we are seeing a lot more focus a lot more of action because we are we are less distracted though i must say we are working much longer hours also uh, work and home boundaries have sort of merged but uh, that is happening on on uh, two of our companies and our portfolio companies raising one was raising their series c and the other was raising their series d Believe me, Dhruv. Okay, uh, these uh, these shareholders agreements were being negotiated right through the COVID lockdown period, and uh, this week both the companies received their monies. Okay, so uh, we worked. I must say, we worked literally around the clock because we were so scared that the investors may step away. But I think we probably working with very, very good investors and we're probably working with even better startups. So monies came in and I just uh, last night got a message from a founder, all monies received, which is, I think, great right now. On the downside, I think what we are also seeing is um, I shouldn't say downside, but the other perspective, I think money is uh, an investment is a factor of demand and supply, right? And most investors who've invested, uh, they have, especially VC funds like the IN fund and others, we obviously have a, a limited corpus and we've allocated money for top up, which is to top up in our own portfolio companies. But with the COVID and the lockdown, I think we have to increase some amount of our parts to say that many of our companies are going to need a much longer runway before the next round comes. So that pot has been created or expanded a little bit. And therefore, uh, it sort of reduces the pot for new investments, especially in funds, okay? Because the fund has a, uh, a finite pot size versus angels who invest of their own personal money or balance sheet, which is much more comfortable. The second thing which has happened is there's a much deeper dive Apart from being saying that, you know, uh, what is the, we we actually with this COVID situation, we've, uh, we've entered into a new, big paradigm shift into the world. The world has changed. I, I think for the next two to three years, we are going to see a huge change in our focus, in our appetite of what kind of products work, et cetera, et cetera. And I think, again, for funds, uh, entrepreneurs would be well advised to remember that funds have a life. They have to return monies in a certain period that they have promised to the funds investors, right? So, so there is going to be a reshift of focus to say which are the companies in the current macroeconomic situation, in the current paradigm shift of the world, which are the companies which are going to grow to be for us as funds to be able to exit and give returns to our company. It is a very tough space. And believe me, those are very tough decisions. And the other piece on demand and supply, I mean, it sounds very, 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 um, I'm trying to be as candid as I can. So if I heard sen sensitivities, it's not intended at all. But yes, I am hearing uh, valuation revisions happening. And unfortunately, the other way around, rather than what entrepreneurs would usually like. Uh, because again, there is a demand supply. Um, when you do valuations, there is, an, there is a perspective you take 
uh, mark to market valuations you look at other companies how the markets are doing uh, a whole lot of factors play a role in valuation and those have been we went a recession it's been, it, we went a downturn and uh, that necessarily means that markets are not at their best in fact they're going the other way around the nifty and if you look at the sensex they they got volatile so i think there is a factor of demand and supply that there are if there are ventures which are uh, which are available uh, like to like um, and at lower valuations they may get picked up versus others so entrepreneurs will have to probably keep an open mind on these kind of revisions okay uh, my last question right uh, to both of you and i would appreciate if we can just close this in 20 seconds because there are a lot of questions coming up what are the two areas or two sectors in cyber security considering the valuation considering the demand supply you just highlighted padmaja right where you see that there is an opportunity to invest right in cyber security two areas both of you so i i honestly think the whole uh, networking cyber networking space is extremely important because uh, organizations will have to move all corporates will have to move much more online number one and i think the other big piece is uh, data security because data becomes the new paradigm axiom of uh, i think conflict sure venkat so uh, from our side as i said right you know there's a new attack vectors coming in every year so i would say anything to do with you know um cloud connected world right where you know you have you have you know you are applying artificial intelligence to a certain extent coming in to these sectors right where either data is getting stored on the cloud or you know industry 4.0 and other things are coming in where you know the channels are increasing multi fold right so how how can you combine these two and you know any these two areas would be a lot of interest for us right in the cyber security area right so okay sure. uh, sandeep my last 10 seconds response and question for me because i have been getting buzzer from the back end right uh, in the cyber security space right the what is your perception about this industry right with this covid state where do you think this industry is moving forward and the way the valuations are going to as pandaj had talked about the valuation also both from a demand supply angle but in 20 seconds response from you where do you think this industry is going and how do you and what do you want to talk about it well, i think uh, the industry is now in the center stage right all this while we were in the sidelines of uh, as an as an top up in the entire it infrastructure buy cycle i think right now cyber tech center space and what we are also seeing the other day i was talking to some other media house the fact that in all of these digital transformation initiatives work from home as a business continuity planning initiative has taken very little focus i think that now comes into the center of uh, things that how working from home per se while while we had byod we had work from anywhere technologies available but the degree of implementation the degree of you know allocation to these initiatives is going to be very large so i think you know in 20 seconds some you know all good times for cyber industry thanks sir uh so no i think uh, we, we are open for q and a from our part uh, i think yes. the participants for the call please uh, take thank it thank you over. thank you so much panelists it was a really good discussion uh, we have a couple of raised hands now so we'll be bringing them on stage due to the positivity of time we can take one question only so sorry about that so let's have mustafa online <clears throat> hello hi hi Good morning, gentlemen. So my question is uh, flipping the story. We've heard about investing, or or how do you look at investing in startups? What about uh, your take on how does a CISO who is a practitioner all his life uh, and he wishes to invest, how does he go about doing this? Who has deep industry knowledge and he wishes to invest? How do you? Uh, what's your take on that? Okay, do you want me to take it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, uh, hi, Mr. Mustafa. Um, I can only say it in one line. You've given me an opening for a commercial, so I can't avoid it. Is uh, Indian Angel Network or IEN has an angel investor platform where uh, investors, individual investors like yourselves, with deep domain expertise, engage and um, help us to uh, help us to diligence and strategize and mentor young startups and invest money 
So I would suggest you look at uh, IndianAngelNetwork.com. Having said that, having said that, there are many other angel platforms, and uh, those are actually the forums that uh, you should uh, engage with. Your expertise, your uh, your engagement, and your monies will all be very welcome with a lot of respect. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sonam. Sonam, Dhruvair, I think we have four, three, four minutes to go as ten fifteen. So we can take one more question if possible. One more question. Okay. So we yeah. have Mr. Yeah. Prasad. Uh, he's the director of Bewolf. Let's put him on stage. Prasad, you have to do yeah, you can have to go very quick. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, hey, Prasad, we can hear you. You can't hear you, Prasad. You have to unmute your uh, mic. I think there was some connectivity issue uh, with Mr. Can, Prasad. Can you go to the so, next one? If there's any yeah, let me check if there's any other question. Uh, we have Mr. Suresh Ayer. Let's put him on stage. Hi. My question is uh, between security uh, products and security uh, services, uh, what's the uh, investor focus uh, would be? That's the uh, uh, question that I'd like to uh, ask. Venkat, do you want to take it? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, I mean, you know, many funds, uh, funds like us, we are focused on security products. Uh, pretty much right because products are fairly scalable and we look for the scalability and you know go to the go to the other countries as well so but you know there are there are funds that that are focused on services but uh you know they're lesser in number but even for us when we look at the product if there is a possibility of having some professional services seg uh, segment where the revenue revenue uh potentially is there we will look into that right but to be honest, I think you know there's a lot more venture capital funds focused on the products than services. That's my view. Yeah. Thank you so much, Venkat. Uh, I think uh, we have a lot of questions now, but uh, what the good part is we have a town hall at the end of the session today. So we'll be taking more questions at that time. So I would like to thank all the panelists today for the engaging session. Thank you so much. I will be ending this session and moving on to the next one on cybersecurity startups, investors, big bet. It will just take a few minutes for us to transition to the second session. So I would request the attendees to please engage themselves in the social lounge. We'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you. Thanks, Padmaja. Thanks, Venkat. Thanks, yeah. Sandeep. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.